In today's video, we're talking about half sleeve tattoo design. Hello everyone, welcome back to another brand new video. My name's Daggett, this is Daggett Designs. I've had a lot of people ask me, how do you take each of the different elements that we draw in our weekly videos and put them all together into a cohesive design that you could actually tattoo on somebody as opposed to just a little sketch or you know a little drawing of a flower or something like that. So in today's video, I'm gonna take you guys through my full process on how I would design a Japanese half sleeve. And with that having been said, let's jump straight into today's video by going to the overhead. All right, now welcome back to the table. So to start this one off, you'll need a piece of A3 sketch paper. And I've actually drawn out this uh, half sleeve, Japanese half sleeve uh, template here. Now, if you'd like a copy of this template, it will be available down in the description. There'll be a link where you can download this template that I've drawn and you can go ahead and trace it onto some watercolor paper, uh, on, sorry, onto some sketch paper the way that I have. So this is the template and I've just traced that through uh, with my mechanical pencil. You'll also need a mechanical pencil or a lead pencil to sketch your design with and an eraser should we need it. So in this video, we're looking at combining different elements to create an entire piece, but uh, not just as a painting, but as a design that could be tattooed. So we're doing a half sleeve flash in a traditional Japanese style. And we're gonna do a koi fish with some rocks and waves and a couple of flowers. So to start this one out, you're gonna wanna look at placement of your koi fish, your main subject matter. And generally speaking, your main subject matter is gonna be front and center. You want that to be like at the front of the tattoo design. And not only this, but it depends which way you wanna have it facing. This will only apply to certain characters. In this case, we're doing a koi fish. And generally speaking, you'll want your koi fish to be facing up or swimming upstream. Uh, but that really depends on the design that you're doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and start laying in a foundation for our koi fish here and you can follow along. So we're gonna do a curved line that comes up and around like this, like a long S curve. At the end of that line, I'll just put in the rough shape for a head. So we're gonna have it come down like that. It's gonna angle slightly more down in this direction and then come more flat towards the bottom there. And then at the front of this, you can just do like a little diamond or triangle shape to map out where the mouth is going to sit. Just like that. Then I like to just continue my spine, this line that we drew here, across the top of our head, and then come across the other way to create like a center line for where our eye needs to sit, coming down the side of the head. And you can just put in a circle for now for where you want that eye to sit. So now to start drawing in the body, we're gonna have the tail sitting down here like this. So I just wanna cut off the end of our body shape and you can play around and adjust this a little bit later on. And you're gonna start bringing that up and around to the top of our head there, like that. And then from the underside of the head here where the belly would start, you can come out and back in towards the body. And now it's time to sort of play. So once you've done this sort of thing, you can play around with the size and shape of everything. So I would like to have a little bit more bulk at the top part of his body here as well. And then slim that down towards the end where the tail will sit. Now we can start dropping in our fins. So just coming in underneath our head here, we're gonna drop in a little triangle sort of shape for this fin. So that's gonna come out, down and back in. It's gonna be like a smooth triangle shape. You can do the same thing on the other side. However, I'd make this one, you know, a tad smaller. You're gonna be seeing a little bit less of the fin. So you can make this one a little bit smaller than the front one here. It's less visible. And then coming around to the top of the body here, following our spine down, we're gonna add in our dorsal fin. So you're gonna come back and start probably at the end of these two fins. So starting at about this point, halfway down the back, and you'll come out like this. You can bring that down, crossing through the center line of the back, coming out, and then joining back into the body. And that'll be the folded over portion of your dorsal fin there. And to join that up, you just bring the bottom line in like that. 
Now from here, adding in a back fin on this side. So we're just coming down close to the tail sort of thing and just adding in another little sort of triangular shape like this for the back fin there. These need to be significantly smaller than the front fins. So a fair amount smaller. Uh, you can do one on the other side if you like. I tend not to do that. It's covered up by the dorsal fin and the other side of the body. And these fins actually sit closer to the underside of the body. So you wouldn't really see it anyways. Now for doing your tail, there's a lot of different styles and shapes that you can do for the tail. I like to flick it off in the opposite direction to the tail. So this is coming down this way. I want the tail to come around and flick off in the opposite direction. This is just going to give us some nice uh, curvature there. So we can bring that around. I want to have a fold over in our tail. So I'm just going to map that in now by bringing that line back around on itself like that, like a little loop. Then you can bring it down to center like that. Bring it out again. And then you can join that up with a smooth line that comes around like this. There'll be a split in the center. That's what that little V shape there is. Now, something I like to do before I start adding any detail to our koi fish is to start mapping out roughly where some of the background elements will sit. You don't have to add detail to these parts yet, but it's important to map these out before you start adding a whole bunch of detail to your koi fish because otherwise things might not fit where you'd like them to fit and you'll end up having a fully drawn koi fish and you know wasting your time. You'll have to trace that onto a new design as opposed to just erasing parts of it. So I'd like to start working on our background and then we can come back and add detail in for the fish. So down in this corner, we're gonna start adding in a peony flower. So I'm gonna add in just a circle shape to start with for the center of our flower. So you can start with just a small circle and I'm gonna go ahead and add in some of our petal shapes. Now, I'm not gonna go through the entire process of drawing the peony here. I've done videos on this previously. I will leave a link in the description down below on how to draw a Japanese style peony flower. And you know, you can do this in a neo-traditional style or a Japanese traditional style. It's really a style preference depending on how you want this thing to look. Okay, a little important detail on drawing in your peony petals. The background of this design is going in an upward direction. So we've got the koi fish swimming upstream. There's going to be some waves crashing up in this direction. And we're going to have all of our wave bars going in that direction. So you want your design elements to flow nicely with the piece. That's part of putting together a design that looks nice. So some of the petals are going to be drawn uh, flowing off in the direction of our background. You know, flowers are fairly soft. So they're soft, soft design elements in tattoos. So they're not supposed to look rigid. Therefore, you can sort of move them with your design. So I'm gonna have the background flowing off in this direction. So I like to have some of the petals folding over and flowing in that direction, as well as some of the leaves coming in that direction. It doesn't have to be that way for the entire flower, because of course you've got other elements going on and you know you still want this to look nice. You don't want it all to be blowing in that direction but I think it's good to have some parts of your flower flowing in the same direction as where your background is going so that it sort of matches the scenery. It's not uh, looking like a sore thumb sticking out. Now, once you've mapped out your peony flower there, you can think where else in the design would it be a nice spot to have another flower. Now, I don't wanna have a flower here because we're gonna have a colored koi fish and his face will then end up in front of a colored flower and that's gonna clash there. I'd rather have something black and gray in the background here, such as the waves or, or you know wave bars, something like that. So we need to find another spot where we can squeeze in another pop of color. And I think this corner here would be a really nice spot for that. Um, that way we sort of frame the design a little bit with our flowers, but we're not distracting from the main subject matter too much. So I'd go ahead and just drop in another small peony up in this corner. It is gonna be behind this fin a little bit. So we'll probably have to play with the colors a bit there. But then again, a fin is not nearly as important as our head or body of the koi fish. That's what really stands out. So I'm gonna add in another small, probably a smaller peony to this upper side. Now for the peony that I'm drawing up here, I'm doing even more of the petals flowing off in that direction so that we're following the direction of our background elements. And this is gonna make things look really flowy and just have a nice look to it. 
Now we're looking at what other elements we have in our design. So I'm going to have some rocks in there. So we're going to have some rocky structures and we're also going to have the water. Now the peonies themselves, they're not just going to be floating uh, in midair. We're going to have them growing off of some land areas. So we're going to do some rocks. So coming in from the bottom corner here, I like to sort of frame off our design a little bit. So we're going to use some rock structure for that. Uh, now I have covered this in a background tutorial, but not extensively. The way that I like to draw rocks or the way that they are drawn, I guess, traditionally is to do these sort of, uh, I'm not sure what you call them, almost like curves and then smaller peaks at the top of each of them. And then there's little flat portions at the top of those. So to give you an example of this, I just got a brush marker out so that I can demonstrate on a little bit of a bigger scale what we're doing here. Uh, but essentially, if our rock outline is going to be like curves that come up into little flat areas like this and they might curve into a little peak and curve into another flat area like this and that's going to give you this jagged sort of rock structure so actually when you outline these the curved parts i like to do just a little bit thinner coming up into the peaks i do them a little bit thicker and then you start to add all these little textures into them that just represent like little dips and holes in our rocks, little textures where the water, I guess, has washed away part of the rocks. They've been damaged over time and you get these little textures in them. And if you look at any traditional Japanese style illustration work for tattooing, this is usually how rocks are drawn. There are some minor variations on that depending on the artist and you know what kind of... Uh, rocks they want to do, what kind of expression they want to have, but this is sort of the typical way that I've seen them drawn, is these jagged sort of lines, it almost looks like someone's taken a bite out of the rock, and then all these little elements of detail. So I've got a rock structure coming in down on this corner, sort of cutting off this corner, and you want to be able to layer this, so I'm actually going to do another rock structure behind our koi fish here, that ties in behind our flower at the other side here because you don't want the flower to be just sitting on absolutely nothing. Although that doesn't matter nearly nearly that much. Most people will just draw them sort of floating in the sleeve. You know, they'll just add the flowers wherever. But I sort of like to make sure that there's a little bit of a base for them to be sitting on. I like the way that that looks. So I've just drawn in the very edge of a rock down here that will end up shading down to black in this area underneath our flower. So it'll become obvious and apparent what that is. And we're gonna bring that line up behind our flower here. And that will just be a little peak that goes behind our koi fish. And you can bring that out the other side if you'd like. For now, I'm going to leave it. Now at this stage, I've already got this design mapped out. You might wanna build it from the bottom up or the top down by adding in rocks, throwing in some waves, adding another layer of rocks. In this case, I've already sort of got this mapped out for you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in some more rock structures. I'm gonna do one just up the left behind our fish here. And again, this would be like the rock sort of area where this peony will be sitting on or you know, nestled on. So you can go ahead and add in another little rock structure up here if you'd like. Now there's no real technique to drawing these. It's just playing around with little jagged curved lines and figuring out what shapes you like. There's no specific way you have to do it. I think keeping in mind that they're gonna be nice and bold, there's gonna be some large areas of black in there and just making sure that your lines look jagged like the edges of a rock, you can't really go wrong. So just play around and find what kind of style you like and it's gonna be a little bit of a self experimentation for that one to find a style of you know, rock that you like. Now the other area I've done a little bit of a rock structure is just on the other side of our fish here. And now we can begin filling in some of our wave areas. So I'm just going in uh, on the belly side of our fish here and adding in some finger waves. It's a really nice spot to add in some finger waves just on the inside of the hollow area of the belly there. Um, if you don't know how to draw Japanese finger waves, that's okay. I have a tutorial on my channel and I will leave a link in the description on how to do that. You're basically drawing long C-shaped curves that then you double up and add a little bit of a taper to them. It's a little bit to explain, but like I said, I do have a full tutorial on drawing finger waves on my channel. And from here, I'm also going to be adding a whole bunch of finger waves to the front of where our head is here. I want the waves sort of crashing up and over 
uh, in the direction that our koi fish is headed in. And not only that, but I think it's important to mention here that adding finger waves into this area of the design, I think is a really, really good idea. If you're doing koi fish, this is the way that I'll normally do it. And the reason for that is because when you shade finger waves, or when I shade finger waves, I should say, primarily I will do them white. I'll do a little bit of gray in the base of them and I will blend that gray up. And I tend to try to blend it uh, to a white before it actually reaches uh, the tip of the finger waves. I try to have that sort of uh, white water look and I try to wash it out before it reaches the tip of the waves there. And so primarily the colors that are gonna be in the finger waves will be white and some very light sort of tone gray, which means you know having that sort of color palette sitting in front of our fish is going to help the head stand out a little bit or give it a bit of contrast it's not going to be sort of hidden behind a whole bunch of other colored elements like flowers and things like that it'll really stand out because it's in front of a dull uh, gray sort of background so now i'm also just coming around the top here with some finger waves and i'm doing these in the same direction they're facing as though they're crashing in the same direction but they're coming from a different spot and you sort of want to do that as well you want to play around with uh, changing the direction of your finger waves. You don't want them all going the same way. That looks boring and you know makes it look very static. So I try and add a little bit more variation uh, to my design in the way that I do my waves. Now from here, I'm just doing a small grouping of uh, waves coming off this side of the body as well. Now from here, as you can see, our design is looking really full. We've got all of our background elements, we've got flowers, waves, rocks, and we've got our main subject matter, which is you know dead center in the tattoo, so it really stands out and is bold, and we have it sort of swimming in the right direction, so it's all sort of coming together. And we're gonna go ahead and start adding a bit of detail to our koi fish before we finish off how the sleeve is actually going to look. Now, before we get onto adding detail to our koi fish, I wanna take a quick moment to tell you guys that I have a brand new brush pack coming out soon. This is the Ultimate Dragon Brush Set. So basically this set will include all of the tools you will need to create dragon illustrations just like this. And it will go from being a sketch up through doing the line work and onto doing shading and color for a complete design there. Now the tool set comes with over 30 different brushes. So you get quite a selection. You get two different tools for drawing dragon bodies and snake bodies, as well as drawing pretty much any other serpentine type creature. There's tail designs, there's different claw designs in there. There's also, uh, there's back limbs and front limbs. So you've got limbs for all the different areas of your dragon and you get different styles of those limbs. We also have seven different head designs to choose from. There's front on heads, there's three quarter angle heads, and they're all in different styles. And you also get some different brushes for hair and uh, for you know whiskers and that sort of thing. And I threw in a couple of background extras. So you get some maple leaves and cherry blossoms in this set as well. That way you can pull together a nice full design. Now the Ultimate Dragon Brush Set has not come out just yet. It is coming soon. And I, they'll make an announcement when that comes out on my YouTube channel. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you can stay up to date. Alternatively, you can head over to Instagram or Facebook at Daggett Designs is the handle for those. Give me a follow on either of those pages and you'll get an update when this guy comes out. And it will be available at daggettdesigns.com.au, link in the description. Now looking at drawing the details in on our koi fish, uh, I'm gonna sort of go through this as though you guys already have some good drawing skills. I've got another video out on how to draw a koi fish which takes it through a much slower and more detailed process. So I'm gonna speed through this one a little bit because we're not just talking about the koi fish as a subject matter, we're talking about this entire half sleeve. So we're gonna start off by adding a bit of detail to our eye there. And then I'm gonna loop around the back of the eye with almost a semicircle sort of shape, just like this, wrapping around the back of the eye. Around the back of that, we're gonna come around framing the bottom part of our face and then coming up. So we're just gonna come down. I like to add a few sort of bumps to this, a few curves to it to give it some uh, inconsistencies. Coming around and then up, looping back at the end there. 
And then just behind this is where the gills will sit. So I like to just add in this little wavy part behind that. Now for the top portion of the head, the top line of the head, you're basically going to sort of mirror this top part of the eye here, but you're basically gonna come down, add in a little bit of a bump where that eye would sit on the other side, and then just smoothly come down the front like that. So that's it for the other side of the head. This is slightly more of a traditional style koi fish. Coming onto the mouth here, you're gonna follow along where that line ended, leave a bit of a gap coming around to the front, and draw in one of your whiskers. So that's just gonna come off like this. And then you can just double up on that whisker shape there. And then just join that back into the bottom of your head like that. Coming over to the other side, you can draw in another whisker, which is just like two little tapered lines, almost like you're drawing a little tail. To draw the shape in for our mouth, you're pretty much gonna follow that little diamond shape that you drew, but just smoothing everything out. So rounding off your corners, and bringing the mouth around like that. And then just underneath this, I like to add an, a second line like this, which is just the bottom lip of the mouth there. Your fins are pretty much all gonna be done in the same manner. Basically what you're gonna do is come out for your top line with a smooth curved line like this. And then I like to add curves in on the way back for the detail portion at the bottom of the fin, you're just doing these little curves. And then you can come in from the inside of your fin there with these lines that come out, just turning your page to get a different angle and bringing those lines out onto your fin. That's basically the way you're gonna draw the other two fins like that. For drawing in your dorsal fin, that's gonna be very similar. You're gonna start by coming out with a little S curve like this for the front, and that's gonna be a smooth line. And then you're gonna come dip back down and come in with your curves. Now at the point in which they cross over, that's gonna turn into a long S curve and continue on the top line of this side into some curves as well. And at the end that can just wrap, curve and wrap back around onto the body like that. And I like to at this point just strengthen up that bottom line. To add in your little details, you're basically doing the same thing you did on your fin just adding in these little lines. All right, adding in the detail for our tail, we'll strengthen up this top line, bringing that back around as a fold over. For the inside line here, I'm gonna add some little curves for texture. When you get to the base here, I like to just loop it around because it's actually joined to this part of the tail here. You can then bring a smooth line from the other side like this and then bring some curves down towards center as well. And then I like to turn the whole thing over and do my lines, my detail lines from the other side. Just following the shape of our tail around. Now, most important to this design, we're adding in our scales. This is like the most important part of drawing your koi fish is getting your scales on there. Now I've got a video on three different styles of koi fish scales. I'm gonna run through the most basic method, in my opinion, the most traditional and simple method. I think it looks the best, but I will leave a link to that video in the description as well, for you guys have some homework to do, but that'll really give you guys a good in-depth explanation on how to do scales in three different methods. I'm gonna show you guys just the most basic one, and that is by coming across the top with an S curve that goes diagonally down the body. And then doing this repeatedly across the surface of your body like this. And then you can turn your page around and come across in the opposite direction. And what this will do is give you a little diamond pattern that runs down the length of the body. Once you've got this diamond pattern, it's really easy to fill in. You're basically going to come up to the center and back down. And you're just rounding off that top corner and this will give you the shape of your scales. Now, once you have gone ahead and done all of the scales on the body of your fish, we can go ahead and start adding in more of our background. So you've actually done like 90% of the work here, you've done all of your small background elements. You haven't exactly, we haven't exactly added detail to our peonies yet, but that can come later on. 
We've done all of our finger waves and we've done all of the main detail on our koi fish there. So we can start adding in the wave bars that are gonna really complete this design. So one thing I wanna start off with is bringing some water across our body here. So I'm gonna start just behind this rock. That's why I have this little hollow area here behind the fin and the rock. And I'm gonna have some water shooting out across the top of the body and down. So we're gonna bring a line that comes out from behind this and down like that. And you can just double up on that line. So I wanna start adding in some wave bars to border off our design here. I'm gonna start in the bottom corner here and show you guys how to do this. Now, whether you're doing wave bars or wind bars, you want them to flow in the same direction as the rest of your background. So in this, we're coming up and around off in this direction here. So that's the way we're gonna do our wave bars. Uh, I'm gonna have it rushing up in that direction. So I'm gonna draw in a couple of lines. We're gonna do one that cuts like that. And then you want to just double up on that line, leaving a little gap in between. And you want to do this for every section that you do these bars. I'll leave a gap of about an inch or so. And do the same thing. And they're going to be in exactly the same direction. Doubling up on our line there. So we've got those two lines. Now to join these up, the way that you want to do that is this is one bar, this area here. So I'm going to join the ends with a little curved line there and a little curved line here. Now to join up the ends on our corner here, I'm gonna bring another curve around, maybe a curve in the center and another small curve to join it up. So now you've got two separate shapes. You've got this little cloud shape and this long bar shape here and you've separated that with this little gap. And that's how you're basically gonna do these little areas. For areas where you've got rock structure, for example, that cuts off at the edge of the background, you can also just add in a little curve and down the other side, another little curve like that. And you want these to sort of match the size. So you don't want them to come right out like that or for them to be too flat and you'll have little dips in your design then. So you sort of want these to flow uh, with the outside curves of your design. At this point, we're gonna drop in a couple more of these wave bars here. And these are gonna be, or this one specifically is gonna be going over the top of the end of our tail. So just come to the end of where your rocks are and we'll bring a curved line that goes up and over like this. And again, you're gonna double up on that line to separate things a little bit. And then you're gonna bring a curve down on this side joining back into where our rock is. Now, this depends on how you wanna do it. I like to split up individual wave bars by leaving that gap. When it's touching the edge of a rock, then you can, uh, you can split it up or you can not split it up. It's really up to you. If you're gonna split it up, I would add in a little line that just traces the edge of your rock that splits it up a little bit. However, this isn't necessary to do in the sketching phase. You can of course go ahead and do this in your outlining phase or even in the painting stage. You can just leave a gap before you start adding in your ink. Now at this section here, there would be another wave bar going down behind our fish. So I'm just going to curve the top off going into our finger waves there. That will just be shaded. Above this, I'm gonna have an area of bars that cut across our rock here to sort of break things up. Our rocks are gonna be primarily black shaded, so you sort of don't wanna have this big clumpy area of black that's gonna look like a cover up. Hey, maybe you do, but in this case, I'm gonna add in a couple more wave bars. So I'm gonna do one that comes up from behind this wave, like this. Again, splitting that line off into two, and that already has its own curve to it, so you can leave that as it is. And then you can come in from behind the waves with another bar that splits off in a two and then curves around to meet itself there. So around the top area here, I wanna have this idea that everything's being pulled into this direction. And then if it goes in this direction, it will eventually circle back. So we've got everything happening in this direction. I'm gonna have the wind bars or the wave bars or whatever you wanna call them coming back in this direction. It's not gonna be opposing it. It's gonna be following the curve of the wave. So it's gonna be following around this way and coming back, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna have uh, one of them come down behind our waves and you can again split that off into two lines. Another one coming down 
behind our waves, splitting that off into two lines. And we'll do one more here, just splitting that off. And then for each of these little sections, of course, you're going to add in a curve at the end of it to create little shapes like that. Okay, coming down to the back of our koi fish here, we've already got this section of rock here. Uh, if you imagine that there's another wave bar going up behind our peony, it's not actually going to, but we might cover the bottom portion of our peony a little bit. So we can bring a line down like this, just a curve, split that off into two. Now you can connect the bottom portion of it up with a curved line and then connect that up into the rock with a curved line as well. Now coming up the back side of our fish here, I'm gonna have another wave bar that goes up in that direction and split that off into two lines like that. Coming up above this, have another one that goes up in that direction. This will go behind our waves there. And you could have another one that goes up just behind, uh, sorry, just in front of our rocks here. And again, to split these off, you're just doing little curves. Coming around and adding in these little curved sections. Now coming up to the area just above our rock, we can add in a few more of these curves. So you can double up on your rock structure if you'd like. Then bring a curve out and around. Doubling up on that line. Bring it up. Doubling up on that line again, just for a small curve at the top here. And bringing that one right up behind our, low, uh, our peony flower there. So now, of course, you can go through, if you'd like to, for clarity's sake, and just erase these straight lines or the initial uh, guidelines that we had there from our half sleeve template. And that will leave you with basically what the shoulder portion of the sleeve will look like at the top of the half sleeve there. Now a quick little tip on drawing more traditional style peonies because that's sort of the last element we haven't uh, sketched in here yet. So I've covered more of a near traditional style uh, peony before but not really a traditional style one. They're pretty similar but with the traditional style ones I like to keep the, the petal formations a little bit tighter, not so loose and I like to have a little bit more of the little textured uh, bumps to it and that sort of thing. So just adding in a little bit more texture to this one as opposed to the larger curves that we did on our near traditional style peony. That's gonna depend on what style of peony you like um, in your illustration work and in your tattoo designs. So you can play around with that a little bit and just find out what kind of uh, designs you actually like. But yeah, with these more traditional ones, I try to add a little bit more of these little curves to it. And to me, that gives it a more traditional uh, feel and aesthetic. Now, once you've sketched in your peony flowers in the way that you'd like them, we've got a complete half sleeve tattoo design, although it's not complete complete because we haven't lined and colored it yet. So we've just done the sketch for it. But I think as you can see, it's a pretty nice design. It flows really nicely and would look really nice as a half sleeve. Now, if the koi fish looks a little bit small, you do have to remember that because it's a half sleeve design, this is supposed to wrap around the arm. So these portions, maybe along here and along the back here, like this sort of area, they're gonna be wrapped around the surface and the koi fish will sit perfectly on the front of the arm. It'll really stand out in this manner. So when you're designing these things, try to keep that in mind as well. You don't want a large portion of your main subject matter to be off on the side or in the corner somewhere where it's gonna be hidden and tucked away. You want it to be front and center in your design. Now, once you've done the complete sketch for this one, we can go ahead and transfer this over to some watercolor paper so that we can start talking about how to paint this one. Now, that is gonna be in part two of this week's video. Now, in terms of inking this one, you're gonna do it the same way you would do any other traditional tattoo design. If you don't know the way that I ink my designs, there is, uh, I talk about it in nearly all of my uh, small tutorials in, in terms of small subject matter tutorials. So I'm not gonna go into detail in this one. However, there are some specific points with this design. So wherever you have doubled up lines, so for your wind, uh, your wave bars or your wind bars, these doubled up lines, don't do any line work on the inside of those bars. Leave them as they are. Don't do any line work on the inside 
of those doubled up lines. So what I'm talking about is the space. That's an exaggeration of these two lines here. Nothing in between here. You want that to stay white. For the portion that runs across the top of the body, that bit of water, just leave that stream of water white as well. And aside from that, I like to do all of my actual subject matter and background elements in a liner. And then for our actual wave bars, you can either do them in a very, very fine liner or you can do them in a lead pencil. I like doing them in a lead pencil because later on when we paint into them, it'll actually cover the lead pencil and those parts will not have any line work to them. That's just the way I like to do them. You can feel free to outline them if you'd like to as well. So we're gonna transfer this to some watercolor paper by using a light pad. If you don't have a light pad, you can tape this up to a window with your watercolor paper in front of it and just trace on through that as well. Now, as you can see, I have transferred the design over to watercolor paper. Uh, if you're wondering, I'm using 300 GSM cold pressed watercolor paper from Fabriano. Now in transferring this, there's a few fine points I'd like to mention. I've done, as you can see, I've done the wave bars. Now, as you can see, I've done the wave bars in lead pencil. That way we can erase this later on, or we can just paint over the top of it with gray and it will soften it uh, considerably without leaving any harsh lines. You can see that there's line that runs through here and actually cuts the design so that this part of the fin is cut off there and this part of the leaf is cut off there as well. Moving up through the design, I've used uh, 0.5 for the flowers as opposed to the 0.1 that I used in the koi fish body. This is to make the koi fish stand out a little bit more in the design. I used a brush marker for the rock textures. You don't have to use a brush marker for that. You can use a regular fine liner and just boost up those lines nice and thick, but a brush marker makes quick work of doing those rocks. I've used a combination of a 0.1 and a 0.2 for our finger waves. I wanted these to be really light and you know push them back quite a bit. When you're doing a subject matter that the waves are sort of the main part of the design, maybe you'd use a thicker liner for those. But because we've got flowers, koi fish, rocks, uh, we need something that pushes it back even more into the background. So I've just got really thin lines for our finger waves there so that they're nice and light. That includes this strip that runs down over the top of our koi fish body. And that has a really nice layering effect to it. Now at this point, I'd just like to point out that if you'd like the full sketch for this one, along with the template, there'll be a link in the description to sign up to my channel memberships. Once you join the channel memberships, you'll have access to the class notes folder, which will contain this full design. That way you can print that out and use it for reference. And that is it for this video, guys. So next week's video, we will cover shading and coloring for this one. But I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I really hope you learned something. And for those of you that requested a full design, including different elements, I really hope this answered your questions. And that having been said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Keep up the drawing. Bye-bye. If you like the content that I make and you'd like to support the channel, make sure you smash that like button. And hey, while you're at it, check out one of these other great videos.